part of the series, we will be discussing on common pediatric endocrine emergencies. A three-month girl baby was admitted to us in PICU for meningitis and septic shock. She was being treated and her blood culture and CSF showed streptococcus pneumoniae. On day three of ICU stay, she was noticed to have decreased urine output. On examination, she has normal hemodynamics, clear chest and blood glucose was normal. The common causes of oliguria in ICU patient may include pre-renal causes like dehydration, cardiovascular dysfunction or third spacing, intrinsic causes related to the kidneys like tubular necrosis or drug-induced, or post-renal commonly catheter occlusion. The basic investigations done in the index child showed hyponatremia, otherwise normal blood gas. The blood glucose was 129 and serum osmolality was 260 milliosmoles per kg. We went ahead and did urine studies and we found that the urine specific gravity was 1.025, urine sodium was 58 which is high and urine osmolality was 350. This is euvolemic hyponatremia with oliguria. The common cause of euvolemic hyponatremia include psychogenic polydipsia, administration of hypotonic fluids during the ICU stay, bowel preparation before surgery and syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. SIDH commonly occurs when there is injury to the pituitary leading on to increased ADH secretion. This leads to water retention and expansion of intravascular volume despite normal osmolality and normal blood volume. The excess volume is then sensed by the kidneys and the renal aldosterone system decreases sodium resorption from the urine leading on to natriuresis. Thus there is euvolemia with hyponatremia and hypernatriuresis. The essential criteria in order to diagnose SIDH include hyponatremia, hypoosmolality, natriuresis, a concentrated urine with elevated urine specific gravity and a urine osmolality which is more than serum osmolality. There are other supplementary features which can help us in diagnosing SIDH. Remember, the diagnosis can be made only in the presence of normal adrenal, renal and thyroid functions, absence of peripheral edema or dehydration and there should not be any recent diuretic use. Treatment include fluid restriction to 50 to 75 percent of maintenance. It is important to note that isotonic saline may not be effective due to secondary desalination that occurs, increasing sodium content of IV fluid. Oral salt with loop diuretics may be used. Baptans are increasingly used in adult population. Data in children are scarce. Another common condition which we need to consider while managing children with hyponatremia is cerebral salt wasting. This is commonly seen in patients with head injury or new post neurosurgical procedure. Here, there is loss of sodium and chloride in urine because of increased natriuretic factors that results in natriuresis and hypovolemia. For the diagnosis, you need hyponatremia, low serum osmolality, natriuresis, and inappropriately high urine osmolality with a normal or high hematocrit or urea. Essentially, the features are quite similar to SIDH and we can clinically differentiate both by a preserved intravascular volume in SIADH with increase in weight gain in some, whereas patients with CSW show signs of dehydration. The urine output is usually decreased in SIADH whereas it is increased in CSW. Treatment consists of volume replacement and isotonic saline is the preferred fluid of choice. Some of these patients may also need mineralocorticoid supplementation. If you like these videos, kindly subscribe to the channel for more updates.